Hi everybody. I am outside on a beautiful day today. The sun is shining. I can hear the birds in the background and I'm surrounded by all of the beautiful plants in my yard. And I wanted to show you the progress of the plants that we planted two weeks ago now because you are going to be amazed at how much they've already grown. So the first one I want to show you is actually our grass plant. And the last time we looked at our grass plant about a week ago, there was not very many blades of grass yet. We only saw a couple just, just barely peeking through the soil. And in a week, look at how tall some of this grass has gotten. It almost needs a lawnmower. So I'm going to actually show you inside the soil so you can really easily see how many blades of grass we have. And then I'm going to take a look at the very tallest blade here. And I think I'm gonna measure with a ruler just to see how many centimeters tall that tallest blade is. And it looks like it is nine centimeters tall already. That's our tallest blade of grass. So inside the cup, I can see all of the little roots going down into the soil. And last time we talked about how the roots on grass are really thin, they're really tiny, they're almost like hairs. So they're not too thick, but they're still doing its job. They're soaking up all of the nutrients and the water from the soil to help the grass grow tall and strong. Okay, the next one I wanna show you is our lettuce. Now here is what our lettuce looks like so far. So you can see there, the leaves are actually taking the shape of what a lettuce leaf, lettuce leaf looks like when you buy it at a grocery store or at a farmer's market. They're still pretty tiny, so we definitely wouldn't cut these off and eat them in salad yet. We want them to grow to be nice and tall and thick. But we can see that the stems are getting thicker and the leaves are getting bigger. We can also see that the roots are going right down to the bottom of that soil. They're working as an anchor to make the lettuce plant stand nice and tall. And they're also sucking up the nutrients in the water to help the lettuce leaves grow. Now you can see that these leaves are nice and green and that green part is called chlorophyll, right? So it uses the sunlight to make food with the chlorophyll. And that process is called photosynthesis. And so you can see that the leaves are getting bigger and stronger every day. Okay, the next one I want to show you are radish plants. Take a look at our radish plants. And the neat thing about our radish plants is the stems aren't actually green. You can see the stems are turning red or kind of a pink color. And they're much thicker than the lettuce stems. So they're much, much thicker. And we've got, let's see, about 10 stems. And the shape of the leaves, they almost look like a heart shape, don't they? So you can see they've got like a double leaf, but they look like a heart. Now the part of the radish that we eat is going to be under the soil. So in about a week or so, I'm going to take out some of these radish stems because we need the soil, inside the soil, there needs to be room for that radish to grow. And if we have too many in one space, they're not going to be able to grow big and strong. So we'll take out a few of these radish stems in a couple of weeks or a week or maybe about a week. And then I'll choose some of the ones that seem to be doing the best that are nice and strong. And we'll leave those ones in the soil to see if we can actually grow the vegetable, the part that we would eat. Okay, the next one is a, is a tall one. Here's our bean plant. And you can see that our bean plant is very tall. Let's actually measure and see how tall our tallest bean plant is. And I'm just gonna line it up with my ruler. It looks like it's about 16 centimeters tall. And when we first planted the bean seed, it had a brown seed coat on it. And that seed coat has now opened up and fallen off. And I think it just went into the soil and it's just disintegrated into the soil. But take a look at this. This is what our seed was. And it's split into two. Can you see that? So inside is the embryo of this seed. And that's what the bean, the part that we eat, is actually going to grow from. You can also see at the very top of the plant, we've got two big wide leaves that are forming here. 
So, and then the next bean, bean plant over here, this one is just starting to grow. It doesn't have any leaves yet. And you can see that the seed coat just fell off and it's about to split open. So I bet in the next couple of days that seed is going to split open. Now, beans have a really thick, uh, thick stem because they grow to be such a tall plant that it needs to be thick so that the stem doesn't break. I put a little stick into our bean plant just in case it needs something to grab onto as it grows. Sometimes the stems wrap itself around a stick, so we'll see if that helps it to stay nice and strong and tall. So I'm excited to see what that looks like in about a week. And the last one I show you is also a really tall one, and this one is our pea plant. And in the pea plant and the bean plant, actually I should go back to the bean plant for a minute, you can see that the roots are really big and thick. Can you see the roots at the bottom there? And so with our pea plant, it has gotten extremely tall and there are leaves all the way up the stem. So let's measure just to see if I can do this with two hands here. Let's measure just to see exactly how tall that bean plant has gotten, an, or pea plant I should say, and it's gotten 22 centimeters tall. And the neat thing about the pea plant is, and I'll see if you can see it right on the very tip, there are two, it almost looks like little strings, but those are called vines. And the vines on our pea plant actually work like little hands where they wrap around or they grab onto things. So I had this in my window and the vines were actually grabbing onto the screen in my window and I had to carefully pull it away. So I put this stick in here to help um, to help this pea plant to stay really strong and I'm hoping that those vines will grab onto the stick so that it will help it to stand up because as you can see it's falling over. So we want to make sure that it stays nice and strong and I might actually take like a little ribbon and tie it to the stick so it stays nice and tall and strong. So those are our plants after only two weeks, 14 days. So I'm excited to show you next week to see what they look like in a week that will have grown even more. Now the next thing I'm really excited about is to show you our, my greenhouse. So if you planted this at home, I would love to see your pictures and compare and see how they're different or the same. Now my, both of my seeds, I'm excited to say, have grown quickly. Like I said last time, each year I get different results with this experiment. Sometimes they don't grow at all and sometimes they grow nice and tall just like these two have. So we can see that the roots, the roots are really thick at the bottom. Do you see those roots? And you can see that they are stretching and reaching for nutrients that they would usually get from soil. But because they're not in soil, this bean plant is not going to survive very much longer. Another thing that you might notice is, do you see all these bubbles or you see, it looks like water droplets on the bag? Well, that's condensation and because these plants are in a bag they're not actually getting air and so we know that plants also need air to help it survive and if we keep these bean seeds in this plastic bag eventually they are going to die they had a good start because they had water but they are going to die if we leave them in here too long so i might have to transplant them into a little cup of soil and then hopefully they will keep on growing but it is pretty amazing how fast they grew already and here you can actually see the bean seed that split open it's pretty neat so I would be really excited to see yours at home if you did any if you made a greenhouse of your own so today I wanted to also read you this story and it's called how are plants helpful because when we think of plants we usually think of flowers. We grow flowers because they look nice. They make our yard look pretty. We grow fruit and vegetables because we eat them. But there are lots of other different ways that plants can be helpful. So I'm going to read you this story written by Kelly McCauley. And I bet you'll find some things in this story that you never even thought of. And again, this is a non-fiction book. So remember, a non-fiction book is a real book. It's based on real facts and information. And inside, there's usually a table of contents that tells you all about the different sections of the book. Living things. People are living things. 
We need food, water, air, and shelter to stay alive. Shelter is what protects us from bad weather. Plants are living things too. Roots, stems, and leaves are parts of the plants. Flowers and fruits are also part of the plants that make seeds. Seeds grow into new plants. And here is a really good diagram of a flower labeled. So here we can see the stem, the roots, the flower, the leaves, and the seeds that come from the flower. And do you know what kind of flower this is? I bet you know. Natural resources. Plants are natural resources. Natural resources are things that come from nature that people can use to meet their needs. Animals, water, and soil are also natural resources. We get many of the things we need to survive from plants and other parts of nature. We get food, shelter, and medicine from plants. Medicine helps us feel better when we are sick. Did you know that we get medicine from plants? Plants provide food. Food gives living things energy to grow and move. Plants make their own food. They make food in their leaves using sunlight, air, and water. All people and animals depend on plants for food. People eat plants. Animals eat plants too. Some people and animals also eat the animals that eat plants. And animals that eat plants are called herbivores. That means they don't eat any meat, they only eat plants. Healthy foods. Plant foods are very healthy to eat. They provide people with energy and vitamins. Vitamins are things our bodies need in order to work properly. We use different parts of plants for food. When you crunch on a carrot or bite into a beet, you are eating plant roots. Grains, such as wheat, are plant seeds. We use grains to make bread. You are to make bread. You are loading up on leaves when you add lettuce and spinach to your salads. Parts of homes. People use materials from plants to build their homes. Wood is a hard material from trees. Wood can be used to build walls and floors in houses. It can also be used to make tables and chairs. In some places, houses are made of bamboo and other plants. Bamboo is a type of grass that has a hard, strong stem. And here is a picture of bamboo. So you can see it's like a hard, hollow stem. And can you see that house that's made of bamboo? You can see all of the stems on the wall. Natural fabrics. Did you know the clothes you are wearing could have come from plants? Cotton and other materials used for some clothing are made from plant fibers. Fibers are long strands of material. Whoops. <laughs> These fluffy fibers are growing on cotton plants. Cotton is strong, soft and strong. Jeans and socks are clothes made of cotton. So here, this field, it looks like flowers, but they're actually a whole bunch of cotton plants. Can you see them there? And they look just like little cotton balls. Plant medicines. People have used plants to make medicine for thousands of years. Berries from elderberry plants can be used to treat colds and flus. Ginger plants can treat upset stomachs. Some people put juice from aloe vera plants on cuts or sunburns. The juice can help skin heal. Plants can also make people sick. However, do not use plants as medicine unless the doctor tells you it is safe. Clean air. People and animals need to breathe oxygen to stay alive. Oxygen is part of the air. We get oxygen from plants. Plants take in a part of air that we do not use called carbon dioxide. They use this air along with water and sunlight to make food. After making food, the plant sends the oxygen back into the air. So you can see on the diagram here that the water in the soil is sucked up through the roots and then oxygen and sunlight make photosynthesis and they make food for the plant and then it 
takes in the carbon dioxide. Plants all around. People use plants every day. Trees provide shade to keep people cool. Wood from trees is used to make paper. Wood can also be burned to heat homes or to cook food. Some of your favorite treats may come from plants. Sugar is made from a plant called sugar cane. Maple syrup and candy is made from a liquid found in maple trees. And we actually have lots of sugar cane around Lethbridge. Helping plants. Plants give us so much. It is important we do all that we can to protect plants and other things in nature. You can help by creating less waste and garbage. One easy way to help is to bring your lunch to school in a lunchbox instead of a paper or plastic bag. And I remember we talked about that. Recycle paper when you are done with it. Something that is recycled is used again to make something new. Recycling paper saves trees from being cut down to make new paper. And we did that all the time at school in our recycling bin. And that is the end of the story. So I hope that you found some different ways that plants are helpful that maybe you didn't think about before. Not just for food and decoration, but for medicine and for building and for, um, for animals to eat and for us to eat those herbivores, those animals. So there's lots of different ways that plants can be helpful for us. So thanks for joining me today and come back next week for another update on our plants. I can't wait to see how much they grow.